Watch them, watch down, Miss World. What a man me feast and girl. With grace and elegance, that is how to charm the audience. Nobody else had a chance. Three chairs for you, cousin Jennifer. The fairest of all, that is what you are. Charm and mannerism with poise and magnetism and stepping in style with that lovely smile. Oh, how we love cousin Jennifer. And we are all very proud of her. She is the most beautiful, yes, the most. Wonderful, the most beautiful girl in the world. Tell me now. Uh-huh. Lovely green lady made history in London, England, and lead them in confusion. Three oh. chairs to you, cousin Jennifer, the fairest of all. That is what you are. I'm talking about charm and mannerism with poise and magnetism and stepping in style with that lovely smile. Oh, Glorious, yes, the most glamorous, the most beautiful girl in the world. Hello, Jennifer. It is so wonderful to have you with us. Thank you so much for being here at the Spice Island Cultural Festival today. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Gemma. It's a real pleasure to be with you, to be celebrating virtually. I know. I know. The, this, the COVID has brought us together from you in Ontario and I'm here in Montreal and, you know, Something, something good, something good that I can actually see you and hear you. Okay, we have a lot of people listening. So I wanted to know, okay, everybody knows Jennifer is from Grenada and represented Grenada in the Miss World pageant in 1970. Tell us, Jennifer, growing up in St. George's, Grenada, did you already possess the confidence that would one day take you all the way to Miss World and beyond. Oh, Gemma. <laughs> well, confidence is something that you develop through your life. Um, but I think when I was very young, I was quite shy. And so I used many opportunities, um, you know, to overcome my shyness. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, taking part um, in carnival, you know, contests, being a, a brownie, being a girl guide, taking advantage of opportunities as I was growing up to, um, to be involved in, in different events must have helped me a lot. But I think I also had um, a willingness to work at whatever I needed to overcome. Fantastic. And again, being the, the confidence that you had helped you a lot, you know, like, okay, I'm going to do twice as hard, work twice as hard. I remember reading in your book that while they were sleeping, you were downstairs on the stage practicing your walk. And, and I looked at that video and I said, how did you know how many steps to climb? They were, that stage was so complicated and you did it with such ease. Congratulations again, 50 years later. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, and you put Grenada on the map with being the first Black Miss World coming from Grenada. What, how did you feel when you went back home 
to Grenada after winning the title? Well, it was completely surreal because they declared a public holiday. The children lined the streets and they were flying the Grenadian flag. Oh, nice. And that, you know, the flag, I realize, is a different flag from, well, from the one we have today. The original yes. flag had a nutmeg in the middle of it. But um, anyway, so they were flying the flag and kids were off um, from school. And it was really a moment of great pride. Um, well, I know there's a movie coming out. Well, it's probably out already in England. It's called Misbehavior. And that is the story of your life. How did they select you to to do this, to make this story 50 years later about uh, Miss Will 1970? Well, Gemma, first of all, I have to explain to everybody, it was not me misbehaving, you know. <laughs> I was waiting to see the misbehavior part. <laughs> no, it was not me. It was the um, it was the women's liberation movement. Yes. So in 1970, the women's movement in England got together, and they protested. They decided that because the Miss World contest was the most seen event on television in the world, that they would make their protests known, better known, and they themselves better known if they infiltrated the contest. So they did that. Mm -hmm. And they threw uh, flower bombs and, and firecrackers and made all sorts of noise and got into trouble and got and stopped the show, stopped the This World contest. So that was the misbehavior that the okay. movie points to. Well, but thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have, I didn't think that you were the one misbehaving. <laughs> well, I just wanted to know, like, Gugu and Batha Raw, she is a fabulous, and she actually looked like you when you were 22. So I, did, did you think that she did a great job in portraying you in the, in the movie, Miss World? Oh, yes. I love Gugu. I love and her, too. <laughs> so I think Gugu is too, the most wonderful young actress um, she she is she's really um she's a, a role model. I think she's a role model for for many young women. When she discovered that she was going to play my part, she reached out to me and said that she would like to meet me. And we agreed to meet in Grenada. She brought her mother from England, and uh, and I brought my daughter. Oh, but she, nice. she did this entirely on her own dime. And this was just part and parcel of who she is. She is very professional. And she is the kind of person that um, walks the extra mile in doing her research to play the parts she does. She's a fantastic actress and she got me down pat. I am sure your words would inspire everyone. I, you know... I know that you have you have the ability to tell us how how can we get through this virus and you know and the social we can be together like you know with friends and have them at home and so so it's a little advice as to how we can handle that. Well, I think first of all, um, Gemma, we have to listen to the health professionals. We have to take them very seriously. Mm -hmm. And the reason that um, we are fortunate today to have social um, um, networks that tell us, give us all the news and not, not remotely um, connected as we were in the past in 2008, sorry, 1918, when there was the Spanish flu, mm -hmm. then the communication must have been a great difficulty for them. But not today. We can turn on the radio, we can listen to, we can watch TV. And we know that social distancing is important. Um, we know that it's important to, you know, practice um, good hygiene, washing hands and wearing a mask. Look, I never go too far without my mask. That. <laughs> oh, that's um, pretty. <laughs> that's a nice one. But um, as far as, um, as the mental health part of it is concerned, you must have heard, many people have heard of mindfulness. And mindfulness is something that tells us that we need to focus on the here and now. 
and not so much on the future. I know it's hard to do, but it is a practice that is important to us, particularly now, so that it helps us to practice um, practice the idea of short-term pain for long-term gain. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for this great advice also. Thank you for being with us here today. But before we go, we have the questions and we uh, six people sent in video questions for you. So I will like now if we can show the question from Anne Alves, your friend in Toronto. Yes. She has the first question. Hello, Jennifer. This is Anne. I am in the process of reading your book it gives an in-depth account of your life, very captivating, makes a very relaxing read. My question is, what prompted you to write your memoir? Thank you. Well, um, what, what, what prompted me to write my memoir? Well, I was doing some downsizing a couple of years ago, and I found my diary, my Miss World diary. I had been writing in it on a daily basis through that whole experience for the whole year. So it was um, it was fantastic details and I would never ever have remembered if I, had been, if I had not kept a diary. But the other reason is that I knew that the movie was being made because I was spoken with, I had spoken with the film producers since 2010. Um, it was a question of them doing their research and writing the script and getting the funding and I knew it would come out, and although I had contracted with the producers to tell them my story, there is something called um, artistic license, which means that they, at the end, could have the right to change some aspects of my story. So I thought it would be important for my story to be told by me, in my words, so the memoir is indeed my story, my truth. Great, very good. Now the next question we have from Sharon Nelson. She is the Vice President of the Jamaica Association of Montreal. My name is Sharon Nelson, First Vice President of the Jamaica Association of Montreal. My question for you is, can you bring us back to that moment when you stood on the stage representing your country, Grenada, in the 1970 Miss World competition. Can you bring us back to the emotions that you, you felt at that time? Can you share those emotions with us? Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, certainly, sure. remembering um, the night that I won was, um, it was completely surreal because although you want to win and you hope that your best effort is good enough. Um, at the end of the day, it's other people making the decision. And uh, so it was, it was a very, very unique, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, honestly, at first I was um, dumbstruck, I think, for a short while. And then I was determined not to cry because I had seen so many previous beauty queens um, crying and having the the crown fall and so on, and this this place was tremendous. The crown was heavy, and all I could do and think about then was, this is a moment of pride, and I must, I must show, put my best foot forward again. So I, I didn't cry, but I was very pleased. I was very honored and, um, and surprised. And um, it's a moment that, um, when I think back 50 years, of course, it, um, and I see, I see the, the film, I see the video, and I see Gugu playing the part, it, it, reminds, me of, it reminds me of how uh, momentous it was at that time. Great. Now we have a little nine-year-old little girl that wanted to ask you a question. Her name is Asia Arrington. And she's in Pierrefonds, Quebec. Hi, my name is Asia. And my question for you is, as a little girl, was it your dream to be Miss World? Thank you for taking my question. Bye! Oh, 
Well, that, that was a lovely question. Thank you so much. I, as a little girl growing up, I didn't even know about this world. But uh, I did want to do something important in my life. Uh, not necessarily being this world, but I thought I wanted to do something, um, something bigger than myself. I wasn't even sure when I was a little girl what it would be. Uh, as my life, as I got older, um, I realized that it's important to decide earlier on what you want to be in life. And the reason I say that is that I think education is so important. And what you don't want to do is to limit yourself in any way. So when you're being educated, you want to take all the subjects you can so that it gives you the chance to do anything later on. You want to go to university, or you want to become a scientist, you want to become whatever it is, a pilot. Um, you need to have certain subjects to enable you to do those things. So I think it's important to take advantage of your education and to find out and to start to think at an early age what you might want to do. Great. That was from Asia. And now our next one, we come here, right here in Montreal, to Yvonne Corian, a fellow Grenadian. My name is Jennifer Hussein. My name is Nellis Yvonne Corian, originated from St. Andrews, Grenada, residing in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I have a two-part question for you. I would like to know, growing up in Grenada as a young girl, who or what inspired or influenced you to participate in a pageant such as Miss World? As a, as a girl growing up in Grenada, I think um, I was inspired most by my mother. My mother has had quite a, a strong influence on me when I look back at my own life. Um, my mother was, um, she was given an MBE, not because she had worked all her life, but because she had, what, in whatever she did, she showed uh, a lot of leadership. Um, the woman, um, Prime Minister of Israel, Golda Meir, as, as being somebody I thought was uh, extraordinary because she was one of very few leaders that in fact was a woman. Mm. But I think that, um, I, think, I think generally speaking, I knew that I wanted to do something important in my life. Um, certainly the idea of being a Miss World had never entered my mind at that age. But I think that, that it's important, it was important for me to have my mother's influence and, uh, and the support of my family as I grew up. And, and the value of education, as I mentioned before, is one that all my family um, appreciated. And uh, I was supported to, to do. And I think that even though um, I went back to university which at a much later age, it's the one thing that I have told my children is important because um, with a good education, you, um, you always have an option in life, I think. Right. Some great questions. Now, you spoke about your friend in New Zealand, Janine Wallace. But she sent in a question all the way from New Zealand. She's watching us right now. <laughs> so um, can we hear the question from Janine? Hi, Jenny. Our long friendship was forged during a tour of New Zealand in 1971. And I was 18 at the time. And my thinking then was that luck and circumstance played a big part in one's life. And I remember to this day a conversation we had, which altered my thinking. When I talked about luck and privilege, you told me in all seriousness that luck had little to do with success and that preparation, focus, hard work, faith and determination were all key to achieving goals. And by being proactive towards personal goals, doors would always open, sometimes in an even better way than we dreamed was possible. And I so appreciated the mentoring you gave me then at the age of 18. And so my question to you is, based on your life experiences, what message of hope would you give young people today? We've both got granddaughters and grandsons. 
and um, they're growing up in challenging times. So what incremental steps can they make and take as individuals responsible for their own lives uh, that can break down the barriers of upbringing, uh, location, colour, gender, etc., which would enable them to move in a direction for the greater good of their own life and the lives of their families, and as a consequence for the greater good of mankind. So I look forward to your answer, Jenny, and it's just great to be with you tonight. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, Jenny, for sending in that very profound um, question or a set of questions because it's so typical. It's typical of, of you and of the people of New Zealand. They're deep thinkers and people who really um, are concerned about the best interests of people. And, um, and I would say, I, I, you know, I, I'm grateful that you remember those things after all those years, because I still, I still practice as much as I can the fact that, um, and that's why I spoke about Guru, uh, how much she impressed me by being willing to walk that extra mile uh, in her preparation to play the part that she did of me in, in the movie. I think we have to work hard and I think we need to surround ourselves with people that are positive influences in our lives. I think it, it is, um, the other thing is as a woman of color, I have always known that I had to work that much harder. I've always felt that um, certainly as a woman, women have to work harder in order to succeed um, in the same way as, as men do. Um, women have to work harder than men in, in most cases to be recognized. And women of color have that double jeopardy. And, uh, and when you're a woman that is married and you have families in order to achieve any, any professional um, uh, levels as well, it's, um, it's, it's a juggling of everything. So it's uh, attitude. I think one's attitude is very important because if we have an attitude of wanting to learn and to improve ourselves, um, we will not take things always too personally. I think that I've learned in life that when I make a mistake, it, you can learn an awful lot if you're willing to ask what was what mistake did I make? And uh, tell me how I could have improved on such and such. Uh, I think when I talk to young people, I say today uh, to try to find a mentor, someone that you admire, that you can approach to be a mentor for you. Because mentoring from people that you admire can be one of the most useful things. The other thing is uh, not to take yourself uh, too seriously. You know, in other words, um, it is possible to make mistakes. It's not always possible to be recognized for what you have truly, um, what you, your worth is. But um, I, I find that we learn more from our mistakes than we learn from our successes. And, uh, and therefore, if we prepare ourselves um, and we have a goal and we're tenacious about achieving our goal, we can find different routes to achieving our success. So if, for instance, one road doesn't seem to lead to where you want to go, there may be an alternative route to take that will get you there as well. And those are some of the things that um, I think I have done in my own life and I'd like to share with young people, particularly young women and men of, col of color. And don't be ashamed in any way of being different because difference makes you what you are. We're all God's people. And he made us all different. He made us different for different reasons. And we often can share and, and be empathetic with other people because of the challenges we ourselves have faced. And you know what? That makes us better. 
That makes us better and it also makes us stronger. Don't Great. forget, don't forget that. Great advice. Great advice. And our last question is coming from Janice Anne Ferry in Chateauguay, Quebec. Hello, fellow Grenadian nationals. My name is Anne Janice Ferry from the parish of St. Andrews, currently residing in Canada. I am employed as an administrative officer at McGill University. Mrs. Jennifer Hussein, thank you for your stellar achievement in winning the crown in the 1970 Miss World contest and becoming the first black person ever to win such a coveted title. Your winning place our island nation Grenada on the world center stage. For this, we are eternally grateful. For too long, we continue to struggle for our rightful place in this world. Regardless of some of our gains, there is much more to be accomplished. What do you think can be done at this crucial juncture to best move the pendulum forward? towards achieving that which should have been our birthright to be treated fairly. So that's a very profound question. And and I, I want to hope that my answer was, but I tell you what, I just done three million from my heart Thank you. on this one, because that's all I can do. All I can say is that 50 years ago, um, my win stood out because I was the first woman of color to win this world. Uh, the first woman of color that people recognized was a woman of color and I was proud of it. And it's hard to imagine. And also the girl who came second was Africa South, Pearl Janssen. Um, she was a second, she was also a woman of color and she um, in her own right in 50 years ago had done a great deal to, uh, to show South Africa, which was then an apartheid country um, that was suffering under apartheid, that um, to show them that what she could do. So opportunity is really important. Having the opportunity to to be to be seen, to be rep to represent people in the first place is is something important. But it obviously is not everything. You know, you see that 50 years after the cut, people of color uh, around the world are still struggling, as you've just said. So the question is, what more can we do? Well, it is, it's, it's really important that we keep fighting and that, um, uh, that the struggle goes on. And hopefully we bring more people along with us. But hopefully in 2020, You'll see some of the more, more substantive changes. Um, it's, it's encouraging to see right now, but it, it's, it's still sad to think that after all these years, we're still struggling. And, and I think the struggle will continue. So we all can do our bit in whatever way we can. We can speak up, we can be counted as we're doing. We're talking about it and uh, letting people know what it is like to, to be a person of color and also to be proud of who you are. Because uh, if you're not, if it doesn't start with you, where would it start? So let's start by being proud of who we are and being unafraid to speak up and to show people what in fact we are capable of doing. And hopefully all of that will make a difference. Fantastic. Wonderful questions and great answers. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, we are delighted that you can be with us today. This was so enlightening. I thoroughly enjoyed this interview. We hope everybody out there looking at this festival will enjoy it. We want to encourage everybody um, to get that book. Miss World 1970, how I entered a pageant and, and wound up 
and wound up making history. My publisher then, told me that I should always have it when I'm having an interview. So I'm just doing what he's asked me to do. That's very, very good. You've got a good publisher. <laughs> and if you guys would want a copy of the book, and she, uh, Jennifer is going to autograph it for you if you buy it on at the festival time, you can drop us a line at Spice Island Day Montreal at gmail.com. And then we'll make sure you get the book. Jennifer, can you tell us the price of the book? I, I am not positive because it comes in different forms because That's you, can true. Get, you can get a Kindle, you can get the, and it's a hard cover as well. So yes. it's got pictures and everything. I'm not sure. It all depends on where you are. But, That's um, true. but, but Gemma, hopefully you can follow up with, with anybody on that, right? Yes. Because so it's not Spice coming from me. You can get it from Amazon as well. But, but if you get it from, um, from Gemma, you can get it signed. So you, Gemma can, can organize that. That's right. So you send us a, um, an email at spiceislanddaymontreal at gmail.com and we'll make sure that uh, you get your book. Okay. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. And all the best. Gemma, may I just take this opportunity to congratulate you and, and your board members for putting together this very, very um, ambitious and worthwhile festival virtually. I know some of the hard work that you must have put into this. And really, truly, it's, it's above and beyond what I thought it would be when you first approached me. And I congratulate you. I wish you a great success. And, and thank you all for taking the time to pose those questions and saying how much of an honor it is to be, to be involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And continue, everyone, to enjoy the rest of the festival. We've got lots in store, so don't go away. Thank you. Hi, Grenada Spice Island Cultural Festival. Uh, I know everything's virtual this year and I hope everyone's staying safe with COVID. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Gugu Mbata Roar and I had the wonderful pleasure of visiting Grenada when I was researching the film Misbehaviour, where I play Miss World 1970, Jennifer Hostin, Grenada's finest. And uh, I just wanted to wish you a wonderful time. I'm sorry you don't have smell of vision that you can smell all the spices <laughs> virtually but um, I hope that there will be many other wonderful ways to experience the culture online so have a wonderful time stay safe and I cannot wait to come back to Grenada when we can all travel again all right have fun <laughs>